Hey there, everybody. This is Will Nations Dev. Uh, I'm a Godot Engine contributor, and I work mostly within the GDScript language and the editor content. Um, so that's as far as manipulating what the editor can do and what GDScript can do. Um, and then I also do a lot of uh, plugin development. Um, so those are kind of my three areas of expertise within Godot. Um, although I <laughs> don't know if I call myself an expert yet exactly, but anyway. Um, I have uh, this project I've been working on called Godot Next. Um, some of you may have heard of it. Um, I've discussed it before on uh, GitHub and uh, Reddit, and I think sometimes a Facebook group. Um, and so this is just a project that really kind of collects together um, a variety of small classes that fulfill random purposes, right? So a lot of times if you're like, oh, I want to add this thing to my project, and oh, I could use this in another project, and oh, this would be useful in so many different places, but it's just like one script, right? And you don't want to create an entire repository and upload it and manage it in the asset library just for a single script, right? And then you have like 20 different assets in the asset library just because you have, you know, one script in each of them, and that I no, I, I don't want to deal with managing all that. So this this is just a place to get together all these different little things that are just kind of basic extensions to the to the to the vanilla engine, right? Um, and it recently, uh, if we jump to the class list, this this is a lot of stuff that's in here for right now. Um, I fully expect this number to grow over time. It, only like two weeks ago or so this was half as big as it is now, less than half. Um, so we actually got a whole bunch of contributions done by XD Game Studios. Uh, so he's a really cool guy, um, was consulting with me on his ideas, and, and we got to talking and figuring some stuff out, and through um, those conversations, we managed to punch out a whole bunch of stuff. So he's got some awesome ideas and uh, was able to bring a lot of things to the table. So um, we got stuff like... Uh, Let's see, this inflector class was from him. Um, we, through our discussions, we had these resource collection classes made um, that can just, the, the resource collections can show up in the inspector and give you like a list of resources that extend a particular type. Um, right now, Godot doesn't support that. Um, and then we also have, uh, let's see, what else? There's an array 2D. Um, just like random things, right? Okay, so I'm getting sidetracked. I just want to do a quick little series that runs through some of the concepts uh, or runs through some of the work that's been done in the project recently. Um, hopefully you guys can start to see the value in it as we go through the various types. And uh, and uh, I have some documentation here. I actually already have it here. I have some documentation here of the use cases and I'm just going to be kind of walking through this and, and doing quick little demos of the types as we go. So I, I hope you guys are interested and stay tuned. Um, the first one that we're going to jump into right now is variant, right? Um, so first question is, have you ever wanted to have an overridable print method in objects, right? You want to pass an object to a print statement or a var to stir method or something and have it print out or return a string that you controlled within the object, we're going to do that. Um, have you ever wanted to have a type, get the type of a variable and have it return what the type actually is? Like if it's a primitive built-in type or something, you get int. If it's, you know, if it's an object, then you'll get the get class value. Or if it's a script class, you'll get the name of the script class, right? If you want to do that, we have this variant.getType method, right? So we're going to check out these two in action right now. Jump in, and here's my variant test. Okay, so what we've done is I'm going to run this, and we will see it in action here. doop -a doo Okay. So I did, first I created an integer of value 2. I then created a variable called r that is an instance of my inner class. That's ref. Uh, and then I created a script class instance. Um, CSV file is one of the things we added to Godot Next. You can mess with CSV files, funnily enough. Uh, it's very useful, but anyway, just wanted to put that in there. This is a script class. So when I run this, 
and I'm doing git type on each of them, I first get int, and then a reference, and then CSV file. Exactly what we would have expected the engine to provide for us. Um, the typical variant class, its implementation of var2 stir, which is what you would usually do for this, of like, you know, something like a, you'd pass in a variable, that doesn't really work for this because it would just give you the, well, not, sorry, not var2 stir. What am I, what am I saying? That would be two string. Sorry, my bad. Um, I'm trying to think, think of like type of, if you gave like type of a, this actually gives you something like this. It gives you an, an enum value, which if you tried to print type of a, then you'd end up getting a number that's whatever the type int flag is equal to, right? You're not actually getting it to say int, you're getting it to say, you know, one or five or whatever the number is. We don't want that. We want to be able to get the thing, right? So I, I want to be able to do something like match variant to string and then give C. And then I can say, well, if they gave me an integer, then do this. And oh, wow, okay. Um, if they gave me a, you know, CSV file, then I want to do this other logic, right? So that's the kind of thing that I want to be able to do. Um, in here, rather than having to test like, oh, is it any of these different enum values? And then if it's an object, what kind of object did they give me? Like, I don't want to deal with all that, right? So that's what this takes care of. Um, so the, the get type is giving us all the information we want here. Now let's look at the two string, right? So with two string, it gave us the value of two, which I provided a, which is two, prints two, exactly what we want. With CSV file, um, this is just an object. I give it the two string, and we end up getting this gigantic object string, which it seems to be a new addition in Godot 3.1. Didn't used to happen that way. Um, and it actually has, or maybe it did, and I never noticed. Um, it actually gives you, as an object, like all this information. And that's terrific, but I just want it to print, you know, whatever I want it to print. So that's what we did here, right? So I can define a virtual two string method. So virtual being it has a leading underscore. Um, and that's just a convention. It's not like a, it's not something that GD script detects or something like that. That's just by convention. Um, <clears throat> so if I define an underscore two string method, this method variant dot two string will go ahead and print that instead of printing all this object stuff, um, which is why we're seeing hello world. So that's just uh, one example, and this is just a nifty little class. I'll I'll jump into it here. We can see it's a tool script that extends variant and has or <laughs> extends reference and has the name variant. Um, and as a utility class, it just has a whole bunch of static functions in it, right? And um, for type real, it'll return float. FYI. Um, I know there are plans eventually to make it possible to compile the engine to use doubles instead of floats. Um, that's probably a little ways off, but um, I can address that when it comes up, right? Um, and so, yeah, that's just basically the engine, or <laughs> that, that's basically the variant class. Um, I'll be exploring some of the other types in subsequent videos. Uh, just wanted to show that in particular use case off to you guys. All right, well, uh, stay tuned if you're looking to see more of what we got in store, and I'll see you guys later.